दोस्तों अगर आपने हमारा वीकेंड फीचर देखा हो ऑन 5.75 पॉइंट सेवन फाइव आउंसेज विच वी रेगुलरली डू ऑन न्यूज क्लिक तो निखिल नाज अर्जुन पंडित और मैंने फॉर्मर इंडिया हेड फिजियो जॉन ग्लॉस्टर से बात की और हमने उनसे पूछा कि हाउ शुड एन इंडियन क्रिकेटर स्टे फिट इस लॉकडाउन के दौरान और कैसे सिस्टम्स इन प्लेस हैं टू ट्रैक द फिटनेस ऑफ आई पी एल फ्रेंचाइज प्लेयर्स डोमेस्टिक प्लेयर्स एंड मेम्बर्स ऑफ द इंडियन क्रिकेट टीम Uh, John if I could just bring the conversation back uh, to the Indian team and I'll just take you through a quote of Hardik Pandya who of course uh, recovered from a back injury and was hoping to get back into some game time as far as international cricket is concerned this is what he said on Crickbuzz with uh, Harsha Bhogle he said for me test match cricket right now will be a challenge if I was a proper test match player and I did not have the game that I had in white ball cricket I would still go and risk my back I've played times there are test matches and followed that after with the ODI and T20 series have come and I haven't done well by the time the ODI and T20 comes my body says I can only give you 50% uh, there was a situation where my back was only allowing me to perform 50% and that's when I started realizing that I don't have to bowl full pace every ball that's when I started bowling more slow balls in the world cup so if I bowl a total of 10 overs in the world cup uh, four overs out of that would be slower deliveries Uh, and not just hardik uh, john uh, you suppose keeping in mind the situation you're coming out of the fact i'm alluding to is the all format player would you yeah. say the all format player should be put on the side for right now till this transitional period being till the end of the year is there and so that you know you break it up with a lot more players coming in and so of course the load on the body is a lot lesser then yeah i think the most difficult one is the all format player now post covid um and particularly for someone like hardik because he still has to get over the mental hurdles of performance as well given post surgery because he hasn't really played competitive international cricket yeah. since his uh, since his back surgery so he still has another psychological hurdle to overcome so there will always be that sort of i wouldn't say reluctance but that apprehension around returning to particular longer forms of the game given that he hasn't tested his body uh even in the shorter forms of the game at an international level just yet so there's always going to be that apprehension for him it's only until you achieve those targets and achieve that without re-injuring that you then cross those that 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 mental hurdle and then push on to into other forms so the all format player post covid-19 is probably going to be um what we call most at risk um particularly if they're going straight from a test series like we said you know i think the england boys are going straight from a test series and then into a, into a shorter format series and the preparation because the numbers tell us like i said the gps numbers tell us is very very different so what they may have to do is even during the test series start introducing some components of the training that is appropriate for the shorter format of the game and we've seen that happen before is that during the test series they may start doing some more high speed running efforts as, as additional training during the test series to ensure that they're adequately prepared and protected for what they're about to to uh, subject their bodies to uh post that in the shorter forms of the game because it's a completely different um work scenario for those players so i think that's that's really important and that's the job you know for the fcs to look at you know this is this whole idea of of mapping ahead and seeing what's coming up are they adequately prepared are they meeting the numbers you know in in test cricket let's say for example he sprints that uh you know his high sprint efforts in his test in the last two series was say 28 km an hour as long as he's meeting that for the that he's okay for test cricket but if his high speed efforts in t20 cricket and odi cricket is 34 km an hour he's not prepared He's six kilometers down on preparation, so the potential for injury is still there. So until he meets those criteria, so that's what you'll work on those differences during the current series, if it's a test series, in order to be prepared for those new demands on the physical body um, uh, in the series after that. Just, just, just one more thing, John. Uh, I, I heard Shoaib Bakhtar uh, saying right now, and this is a great time for cricket content, by the way. Everyone's yeah. on uh, social media and is chatting, and you know, people like us who were dying for. courts and uh, stuff coming in now we've got like so many of them we we, we can easily pick and choose okay no today we're going to play this we're going to play that so shoaib bakhtar said in an interview with sanjay manjreka he said listen i don't enjoy uh, fast bowlers of today because at my time i used to come in try to bowl a fast ball every single delivery as a result of that i've got bad shoulders i've got bad knees i've got bad backs and nowadays uh, bowlers are being a little more cautious is what he said so like hardik said right now 
like if there if there's six deliveries then a couple of slow deliveries will come in as well so that the ease on the body is a lot more where do you stand on this from your from your uh, point of view uh, would you would you say like uh, are you fine with that that the bowler is not going in 100% because that's his job I- Look, I think it job depends body on the is, format of the game. I, I I think it depends on the format. I mean, T20, you probably can't you can't use that analogy because it's it's um or you can't use that example because you have to be creative in T20 cricket. If you come in and bowl 150 k's an hour every single ball in T20, you'll get pumped. So variety is is different in forms of the game. But if you're an out and out fast bowler and you're playing Test cricket, your job is to bowl as fast as possible for as many balls as possible because that's what you're employed to do. So again, you talk to guys like Stephen Jones, um, who are you know the best guys in the world at preparing fast bowlers to bowl fast. They will tell you exactly how to prepare a guy to do that exact job, because there are specific routines in order to do that. Because at the end of the day, particularly in in Test cricket, that is your job. If you're picked to bowl 150 plus, and you come in and bowl, you know, three or four balls at 150, and the next three or four balls at, at you know 135. That's not your job. There's a hundred other bowlers who can bowl 135. So your job, it, 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 that's the job description, so to speak. You need to be prepared to adequately perform your job description. Your job description in T20 is very different. Your job description in T20 requires you to bowl slower balls, Yorkers, be smart, bounce, you know, slower ball bounces, whatever it may be. But your job description in, in, in test cricket for a traditional fast bowler up front, the, ir, irrespective of the wicket, is to come in and bowl fast, and you need to be prepared to do that. Mitch Johnson, I think, was probably... I think he did it brilliantly in that Ashes series in Australia, where he just kept coming back and coming back. His first spell would be 150. His last spell of the day, after 20 hours a day, he'd still be bowling 150. But that was built around a very new training program, and a new nutrition program, everything that he put into place in order to do that. And if that's what your job is, then you are have, going to have to be very disciplined in other areas of your lifestyle and the way you prepare and take advice from the best people in the business in order to get your body to do it. And that's it. Simple. Also, I, I think you've got to take uh, you know, comments by Hardik Pandya and a few others maybe in these times with a, with a pinch of salt. I, I say that because uh, while you know, they do talk about uh, their fitness and the issues that will happen in their fitness because of bowling fast. You also got to realize a lot of them have made up their mind that test cricket probably is not the go-to format for them. And, and a lot of players are now falling in that category where, you know, they'd rather play the shorter formats than, than play the test cricket. So everything is then built around this narrative where, where you may hear a lot of fast bowlers. I'll give you another example of Mohammad Amir from Pakistan, you know, at such a young age has already decided that. So the whole narrative is built around fitness, but you also realize that, that in their head, they've realized that, you know, the glamour, the money and everything belongs in the shorter format. So, so you build a narrative whereby you say that, you know, it's physically not possible for me to perform in all formats and then try and play the format where you get the most out of. Yeah. And, you know, and it's, and in, in this context, you're talking about Hardik Pandya, the, the all rounder as well, mm-hmm. you know, because he's also got a, a very, you know, unique batting uh, capability to fall back on as well. And he's a gun fielder. So, He's not an out-and-out fast bowler. I, I would say his fast bowling is a value addition rather than being his primary skill set. So, you know, I believe he's, he's probably as good a batsman as he is a bowler. So, so his, his, his example is, is, is slightly different to, a, you know, I don't know, a Shaw Bakhtar or Sean Tate or Brett Lee or, a, um, or Varun Aaron, for example, who's still probably in India's fastest bowler. Their job in the longer forms of the game is to run in a bowl flat out. You know, and but Hardik Pandya also has to think, well, that's one of my jobs, but I've also got to front up and bat potentially for, you know, two or three hours um, as, a, as, a, as a middle order batsman and do a, uh, do a good job there as well. So his skill sets are sort of spread over two or three areas which, which he needs to focus on. And, and for you to focus 100% on being an absolute out and out fast bowler is almost all consuming. And then have to then be, you know, and that's why I take my hat off to someone like Jacques Callas. Jacques Callas, for the majority of his career, bowled 140 plus, opened the bowling, batted three, yeah. you know, 14,000 runs and 300 and something. Test cricket. You know, unbelievable. And, and we look back on that and think, well, hang on, that was almost superhuman yeah. given how hard we know it is now to front up every day and bowl 140 plus. 
with a, with a new ball in your hand. So, yeah, I think he's an exception. Um, you know, is Hardik Tandia in the Jacques Callas mold yet? No, you know, not yet. And he's still got to prove himself, not just from a numbers perspective, but a, but a you know, longevity perspective. Um, but, but I think that it's a, it's a damn hard job to bowl fast. And, but, and if you're trying to do that, plus two or three other things as well, it's even harder. So uh, that's what I'm saying. You need the right advice from the right people built from the ground up with those people understanding your body type and training you specifically for your body type only. That's it. John, then would I, would I be right in saying or would I be jumping the gun and saying that we've seen uh, the back of the express all quality quicks? Because if you're a quality quick, you're playing pretty much all three formats. Mm-hmm. If you're playing all three formats, can you, be, can you afford to be that express quick like a Shoaib Akhtar or a Brett Lee used to be in today's time? Yeah, I think sadly, I think you're right. Um, because I think if you're an express quick, that's pretty much all you can do. Um, like I said, either that you've then got to adapt and, and, and spend a lot of time developing skill sets for the shorter forms of the game, which is slower balls, slow ball bounces, you know, all the other things. So it's taking away from your core skill. Um, and like I said, to stay bowling at 150 plus takes a lot of not just physical effort, but mental effort as well. Um, and, and you have to train very, very differently for that. Um, you know, I, 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 one of the things I would suggest that at some point, if you get the opportunity to talk to somebody who really does know the fast bowler inside out and how to prepare them, particularly for the different formats of the game now, the demands of the formats of the game, then, you know, someone like Stefan would be great value to you guys to sort of understand that, that at some level we can, there, there are two or three individuals in the world cricket who can still adapt but I'm not sure that all of them can because, again, physically to transfer from one format and, and the numbers, like I said, the GPS numbers tell us how hard it is to move over format because the demands are so different. So you're going from, from almost completely different energy systems that you're using in T20 to test cricket. So you need to look, therefore, at how you're fueling these guys. So your energy systems change, your fueling mechanisms change. They determine performance, they determine recovery, they determine inflammation, they determine um, uh, injury. So even right down to what these guys are being fueled will determine how fast they bowl. So there's so many sort of areas that now need to be covered specifically to bowl fast that if you're then, you know, one week playing T20 and doing that and then two weeks later playing test cricket and bowling 150 for 20 overs, it's almost, it's very, very difficult to do. उससे फॉलो अप करने के लिए मैंने बात किया विदर्भा कैप्टन फैज फजल जो इंडिया के लिए भी खेल चुके हैं ऑन हाउ ही इज स्टेइंग फिट फिजिकली मेंटली ड्यूरिंग द लॉकडाउन ये रही कुछ बातचीत फैज फजल के साथ फॉर्चुनेटली आई आई हैड आई मीन आई आई मे आई हैव अ रूम इन माय हाउस व्हिच इज टर्न इनटू अ स्मॉल जिम नाउ सो आई बॉट दैट माय वेट्स एंड एवरीथिंग लास्ट ईयर सो आई डिडंट नो हाउ सो आई मीन इट वाज and I, unfortunately this time is being used uh, in that room a lot uh, yeah and in your, and because of my colony where i live uh, it's a very it's a closed colony it's a locked colony right now uh, no one can come in no one can go out uh, safety features everything is everything is very good so we have a ground here in any so i am all running mm. stuff outdoor stuff it can be done there uh, running alone definitely uh, i train in the evenings uh, you know Uh, because mornings are uh, a little busy so uh, after 7:30 uh, till 9:30 i have those, those two hours with me so um, uh, i i train on that at that time uh, so i quite get quite a bit of time there i have been very fortunate because yeah. my family is always very supportive uh, with with me train with my training and everything so yeah i always had a diet plan with me so you know by very i'm be, i'm like very fortunate that uh, Uh, we are getting stuff very easily here because a couple of stores are here nearby which which sells everything so according to my diet so i get my diet plan everything uh so yeah it, it just because of the maids which are not coming to the house uh, it gets a little tough yeah. you know uh, because there were a couple of maids who used to come and cook for me uh, and definitely my wife and mom were there but you know after the baby uh, it's more concentration is is on it's on the baby so uh but yeah they are they are still managing to uh, uh treat me as a baby as well yeah. <laughs> i i've got a small 
uh, cement track in front of my house. Uh, if I can show you now, I can show you. That would be well. great. <laughs> so, you know, this is my colon, it's my front. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, lovely. yeah so, and you know, there's the cement part. Just, yeah. uh, I'll show you. I'll go in front and then I'll show you. All right. So the, lovely. So this is my, yeah, that's my house. And you know, this is, this is the part. And you can uh, it there, just to yeah. make it, yeah, and just to make it a little more difficult, there are a few cracks you can see on the wicket. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be easy. So, it should know, not be easy. <laughs> it's it's not easy. It's not easy, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, very uh, cool. Just keeping yeah, it a little more tougher. That. But you know, uh, we have got a um, teams group, uh, WhatsApp group, and uh, we communicate a lot there. And then uh, we have got a this uh, this Zoom meeting is helping a lot. You know, uh, we've got a meeting room. Uh, which all the players come in the morning and then we log in together and uh, we've got a training program. So uh, very basic, all body weights because I'm sure not not may, not many people would have weights in their houses. So, you yeah. know, everyone, all the probables uh, are being monitored by the trainers and physios and, uh, you know, uh, they are being looked after really, really nicely. So we're trying our best to uh, keep fit and uh, be, I mean, keep monitoring all the, all the players because, you know, whenever the game starts, we have to be on your toes again. Yeah. So, uh, so it can get a little tough for the cricketers, to be very honest, to come and directly play the professional cricket. So, so yeah, it's, it's been monitored like this. So, this was Faiz Fazal, Vidarbha Ranji team ke captain on how he is staying fit during the lockdown. If you haven't seen our weekend feature, nahi dekha ho, 5.75 ounces, where we talked to John Gloucester, se baat ki, to please see it on our YouTube channel, our Facebook page. Pe, and stay updated with us on News Click Sports on Instagram to get more updates and features from the world of cricket and sports in general from all of us at 5.75 ounces. Stay safe. Thank you.